Races East Studios presents Aluminium Case Fan Cooling. We're going to call it the ultimate NVMe cooling strategy. This is part two, the ultimate budget NVMe cooling solution. What are we testing it on? Well, that's the JE NVMe cooler. Check that out. What are we going to fit it into? The HPZ 840 workstation. Check out the video index there as well. Pause if you want to view it. Right now, quick specification. We have an RTX 3080, the E5 26970 V3 CPUs, and uh, one little problem of a GPU upgrade, we ran into some clearance issues. We installed a Zotac RTX 3090 Ti Apollo Extreme, check out the features there, 24 gig of memory, and a very, very solid 450 watt power draw. Pretty powerful GPU, and we're powering it using three 8-pin to one 12-pin connector. Max power from this PSU is 648 watts. That's incredible. But right now, this NVMe adapter will not fit. That is my boot drive and it's kind of important. So I tell you what, we'll open this up, we'll take off this backplate and we'll modify it. We'll make it so that it cannot overheat ever again. Check out those toolless bays while we're here. HPC 840, those four toolless bays, very useful. Right now, popular for a bit of a RAID setup. Okay, let's grab the Zotax box and we'll work over the open case. Bit of a risk but i'm sure we can manage uh, that without too much trouble now grabbing our screwdriver any recommendations here this particular one's not magnetized but i feel like that's generally a good idea quickly zap out those screws you didn't need to see that let's open this up now interesting here this has actually already been loaded with thermally conductive pad yes that's right five layers sitting on top of that nvme why why would you put thermal pad on here well, thermal connectivity is probably the coolest thing ever because it's going to be a measure of how quickly he can be dissipated. And right now it's 8 watt per meter Kelvin. That's a pretty solid number. And we're going to push for one more layer. Where's this layer going to go? Good question. I mean, there's already five in there. Surely we can't fit more. Well, there's an air gap underneath the NVMe. It's actually pointed out by one of the viewers. So let's see if we can fill that particular gap and uh, see if we can make this sandwich even more impressive. That's right. That does look really beefy. Let's go for it. So thermal pad, we're gonna see if we can get this upgraded. Then we're gonna do some benching. Check out this future video as well, where we take thermal pad, a slightly more branded and uh, higher thermal connectivity rating pad. And we're actually gonna throw it into a laptop, the uh, Dell uh, business laptop. But check that out in the next one, the Dell Latitude 5580. Set it on the 10.8 very very solid thermal pad okay let's look at that so we're going to try and trim this to size and then we're going to fit it on our nvme now this particular one's a two mil thickness and you want to match that up pretty carefully i think the 1.5 is a good option as well but ideally cut this with a precision instrument on a solid surface i'm going to go for a perfect cut on a bit of cardboard and i'm just going to eyeball it no measuring probably should measure this i'm going to say it's not too bad that does look relatively straight Right now, do some quick trimming, and I'm going to call that a perfect cut. Why the gloves? Well, it's dangerous cutting with blades, so that definitely helps. Now, for the trim done, let's insert it underneath the NVMe, and let's do our test. Now, you'll see the little uh, censorship sticker there. That's just to cover the NVMe details, but there's also a bonus video on there, which not a lot of people have seen. It's not public, so if you want to see it, check that QR code. Now, right now, we're covering the entire surface of our NVMe. Why are we doing that? Well, pretty important to get that thermal capacity flowing. And I'm going to peel this back slightly. We'll do a quick uh, trim here. And yes, definitely check out that blade. Really sharp, but the gloves are meant to be cut proof. Hopefully they are. Hopefully no uh, mistakes here. But we'll do a slight trim. We'll leave enough space for the mounting hardware. And uh, naturally, this is going to change being on NVMe length. Talking about NVMe length, hopefully you're aware there's lots of different sizes. While well, we're checking those out and making sure your adapters suit those lengths. But right now, we need to remove the plastic film critical, otherwise that conductive pad will not do anything. There it is. I'm feeling pretty confident on this. Okay, we need to install our mounting hardware. That is our standoff. That should just slide underneath, although it might be difficult with the thermal pad creating a bit of surface tension. It's okay, we'll pry it away. Pop our screw in, and yes, that goes in from the back to keep it in place. Now, right now, I'm feeling pretty confident that this modification's done. We can move on to benching. Wait a minute, let's inspect our work. Now I feel like that screw might be doing a bit of damage. Are you, are you seeing that? Oh, there's a little bit of tension there. That's flexing that board ever so slightly. Now the pressure here could be detrimental, especially with thermal cycling. I feel like I might remove the mounting standoff. That might just release some of that pressure. So we'll do that. It's not gonna be needed and I'll show you why. There's so much surface tension, this NVMe will never go anywhere. Now that's going to leave us with the ability 
to uh, hopefully relieve some of that pressure. I think that's looking a little bit better. You'll see here on the side profile, give it a slight nudge. Yeah, that looks pretty well seated. That looks a little bit better, less pressure, excellent. Okay, that uh, DaVinci AI working hard trying to keep the censorship running there. But the moment of truth, can these layers actually help your NVMe to run cooler? Well, let me throw this back together and shall we find out? I think that's all done. Ah, oh, wait, we had one problem to solve. Let's quickly remove this side bracket as well. Is that going to cause any problems? Well, no, this bracket is purely there to keep the adapter in place. So as long as the machine doesn't move around, the adapter shouldn't go anywhere. Gravity, the joys of gravity. Okay, two screws and it's all out. And that frees up our NVMe and we won't scratch up our GPU backplate. Excellent. Now, in terms of our loose adapter here, we could fit that back. Whoa, whoa, whoa lucky I caught that one. Imagine finding that in the machine itself. NGF sizing. You'll notice a second slot here, and that is unfortunately for the slower form factor, which is not NVMe compatible. It's just an M.2 drive. But there it is. Our adapter is fixed, and obviously we've got to put the screws back, but I'll just magically put those back in without you having to watch. There it is. Okay, it's fully ready to be remounted. The question is, does it fit? Well, with this gaping big hole here, I think it'll be okay. Hopefully we don't have any creepy crawling uh, climbing up in there. Wait, was that a spider? It's okay, we'll seal them in there. Now, quick product review. Why? Well, I was going to show you some footage using the Kaiser Bass X450, but it decided to throw away the footage. I know it's rude, especially because there was so much good footage, but nonetheless, we probably should upgrade this. Uh, remind me to get maybe a GoPro Hero 11. That does look like a solid action cam. It's okay, we'll save that for the future. And, uh, ooh, cool glitter box there. Let's go for it. Does this fit? I'm going to say this is going to slot in without any problems right now. Let's check. Yep, sorry, no, that's looking pretty good. I think we're done there. And uh, I guess we could say case closed. Still pretty tight tolerance, but it does fit. Perfect. Now on the note of case closed, can we actually close the case on this particular machine with this GPU sticking out of the case? Um, hmm, that does look problematic. Tell you what, should we take some measurements? I feel like if we take some quick measurements, we can figure this out. Surely there's a way. Check out that one. Let's see how big these tolerances are. We have, oh, that's about 0.8 centimeters for GPU fan inlet. That's maybe not enough. Looking at the cables, that's about a 90 mil or 9 centimeter extrusion or protrusion from our case. And for the Toffman connector itself, that's about a 30 millimeter protrusion. So that's phenomenal. Now you could try and force your case back on there, but no matter the force, this lid will just not close. There's absolutely no chance. So any alternative solutions? Well, I guess you could clip it in down the base and maybe use something to space it out. So, I mean, there is that option. I don't really think you can do it the other way around. There's no latch uh, that's gonna hold that in place. So what are the alternatives? Well, you could leave it open, which leaves space for future upgrades. What kind of upgrades are we talking? Well, check this out. I know it's not pretty, but we have so much added expendability. Check it out in the side video. Uh, 3D model? Yeah, we probably could design a whole new case lid. That'd be interesting, but we need a 3D printer. Anyone else feel the bead dropping? Oh yeah, there's a bead about to drop. Let's go for it. Quickly do some DJing here with our workstation, and then I feel like we're getting fired up. Question is, what are we getting fired up for? Hopefully not NVMe thermals. That should be nice and cool now. Let's test out Benchmark. I'm sure our workstation's ready for some heavy, heavy workloads. Check out the quick index there. Yes, there's a nine hour data log coming up. Can you believe it? Nine hours worth of footage. Is that even possible? Quick teaser, the RTX 3080 is gonna find its home in a new machine where it's gonna work hard to capture some footage for us. Check out that RTX 3080 Strix, very capable GPU. Now we're gonna throw this into the Z240 case swap. So Z240 motherboard, Leon Lee case. Data logging, using hardware info, we're gonna measure a whole bunch of real life conditions. First one is 3D Mark, Time Spy Benchmark. So looking at this CPU package, we're looking at our temperatures and our NVMe temperatures, 54 degrees before our test. That's with just the five layers. And then we added the extra layer, we saw solid reduction, two degrees on our NVMe temperature itself. And there's also the hotspot temperature, a little bit higher. That's a two degree drop on the NVMe and a five degree drop on the hotspot. Now what about Forza? Something a bit more taxing. Pre-test, 61 degrees. That's running relatively hot, but 
Would you believe it? We saw solid reduction, it dropped down to 53 degrees on the NVMe itself. Check out those curves. That's a pretty solid reduction, up to eight degree drop. Incredible, degree Celsius, by the way. Okay, next test, Samsung Magician. Now, while this is running away, lots and lots of things to check. Our NVMe is staying nice and cool, 48 degrees. Oh, that's frosty. Checking our data output here, you'll notice we ran the test for 3,100, 31,832 seconds. Wait, is that really long or is it just me? A really long test. We had some interesting data there as well. Check out our GPU specifications. Now while this test is running away for a very long time and uh, why not quickly answer some of your questions. First one here, we had a viewer recommending the thermal pad. So I guess he's the inspiration for this follow-up video. Okay, there's NVMe speeds. Pretty solid. I'm gonna call that around 3300 for our read speed and probably a little bit less for the write speed, about 3000, that's pretty solid. So we'll quickly update uh, Mathieu here on our temperatures. Pretty solid, 58 degrees, we'll go 60, give or take, depends on what we're doing. And I'm gonna say around 1.5 mil for our thermal pad is solid, but pretty decent NVMe speeds. We'll just zoom in on, I guess, the entire test here. What else did we run in our test? Well, there's so many test conditions that we put through. Here's DaVinci Resolve. And yes, we're rendering a video here. That's one of our related videos, Z240K swap video. Pretty cool, check it out if you're interested. Now, while this is rendering away, I feel like we should check some more data. Let's check out the CPU usage. That's right, the max CPU usage throughout a very long test. Is that nine hours worth of recording? You do the math on that one, incredible. Okay, computer's running really well. Memory's working away and our GPU's doing a really good job. Check out that encoding using 100% of our GPU, wow. What about temperatures? Well, let's check them out as well. CPU temperature and we have our GPU temperatures. And overall, that's looking pretty solid. I'm guessing about 70 degrees there on the CPU package, which is sort of the hotspot temperature included in there. And we've got a rather frosty 65 degrees on our Zotac. It's doing well. Quick shift, Aceto Corsa. Let's do a quick check in here as well. What about power draw? How much power does the system draw at the moment? While well, looking just at the GPU, and note the data is normalized to the max power use of the GPU, which is about 450 on this model, we can see we're not quite getting to max. Now that's somewhat expected because the GPU will be slightly bottlenecked by the hardware. And looking at those numbers, maybe up to about a 10% bottleneck, at least in those uh, tests. What about comparing CPU and NVMe temps? Is there some sort of correlation between them? Well, having a quick look, we saw a pretty wide range of usage here, 10% to nearly 100% on that CPU, incredible, and pretty solid temperatures. We did climb up to about 63, 64 degrees on the NVMe during Cyberpunk. That's right, Cyberpunk's pretty taxing, and check out the footage, that is looking pretty crisp. Uh, nice 4K gameplay in Cyberpunk, definitely a stressor. What about power draw? Does this use a lot of power? Well, interestingly, we definitely pick, push the power draw. You can see up to 100 watts there on CPU, but GPU wasn't too bad. Total percentage there again, pushing up to about 90%, although not too bad in uh, tests here in Cyberpunk. Check out the power draw there as well. This machine does use up to 760 or thereabouts watts, and that's power draw for the entire system. Keyboard, screens, you name it, the whole system. Now, I'm gonna call that some pretty solid decreases. Our NVMe's running around 50 degrees right now, which is a solid decrease. What was it before? Well, up to 83 degrees, 95 on the hotspot temperature, which is insane. Well worth considering this upgrade. I'm gonna call that a very, very good bang for buck upgrade, quick NVMe adapter, and some thermal pad, giving us an exceptional experience. And that's all. If you enjoy the driving, keep watching. There will be a few teasers snuck in there. This is a Seto Corsa modified with Content Manager, Custom Shaders Patch, Soul Mod, Pure Mod, and even the JDM Car Pack. Makes for some really, really cinematic driving, and we'll just quickly navigate this corner, feeling confident, understeer, it's okay. Okay, we made it through, no worries. Now, a quick challenge. Are you up for a challenge? Okay, how about this? I'm gonna give you a quick challenge. I want you to try and guess what car this is, uh, but I'm not gonna show you the vehicle. Let's see if you can figure it out. If you can guess it, send a message in the chat. While you're busy deciphering it, I see lots of details on that dash. Wow, all those gauges actually moving, that's incredible. Yes, the vehicle's lime green, but that's just to throw you off. I don't think these were ever released in lime green, and it's probably a crime to do so. 
while we're busy driving away here, I feel like a teaser is appropriate right about now. Yes, check out the TRD badge there as well. Huge hint. There it is, our Z420 is actually going to be case swapped into the Fractal Defined 7XL, creating a monstrous NAS build. Stay tuned for that. We'll hopefully get the case unboxing out fairly soon, but check this out. Such a large case that Z240 is not going to know what hit it. 240 or 420? I don't know, it could be either. The reveal! Did you guess the car? Hopefully you did. I'm going to call that the Toyota Supra. You must have known. So many hints there. Absolutely monstrous vehicle. Well, hopefully you had fun on that one. Definitely consider that NVMe, NVMe upgrade. And, uh, oh, that's my exit. I gotta get this. Sorry, I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Stay safe. NVMe Cooling Strategy Part 2. Have a good one.